One of the most important characteristics of leaders and top people in every area of life is that they know who they are, what they believe in, and what they stand for. Average people are usually confused about their goals, values, and ideals, and as a result they go back and forth and accomplish very little. Men and women who become leaders, on the other hand, with the same or even fewer abilities and opportunities, go on to accomplish great things in whatever they attempt. Life is lived from the inside out. The very core of your personality is your values. Your values are what make you the person you are. Everything you do on the outside is dictated and determined by your values on the inside, whether clear or fuzzy. The greater clarity you have regarding your values on the inside, the more precise and effective will be your actions on the outside. You can imagine your personality by thinking of a target with concentric rings. From the inside to the outside, your personality is also made up of five rings. Starting from the center, your values radiate outward to the next circle. Your beliefs. Your values determine your beliefs about yourself and the world around you. If you have positive values such as love, compassion, and generosity, you will believe that people in your world are deserving of these values, and you will treat them accordingly. Your beliefs, in turn, determine the third ring of your personality, your expectations. If you have positive values, you will believe yourself to be a good person. If you believe yourself to be a good person, you will expect good things to happen to you. If you expect good things to happen to you, you will be positive, cheerful, and future-oriented. You will look for the good in other people and situations. The fourth level of your personality, determined by your expectations, is your attitude. Your attitude will be an outward manifestation or reflection of your values, beliefs, and expectations. For example, if your value is that this is a good world to live in and your belief is that you are going to be very successful in life, you will expect that everything that happens to you is helping you in some way. As a result, you will have a positive mental attitude toward other people and they will respond positively towards you. You will be a more cheerful and optimistic person. You will be someone that others want to work with and for, buy from, sell to, and generally help to be more successful. This is why a positive mental attitude seems to go hand in hand with great success in every walk of life. The fifth ring or level of life is your actions. Your actions on the outside will ultimately be a reflection of your innermost values, beliefs, and expectations on the inside. This is why what you achieve in life and work will be determined more by what is going on inside of you than by any other factor. You can always tell how a person thinks most of the time by looking at the conditions of their outer lives. A positive, optimistic, goal and future oriented person on the inside will enjoy a happy, successful and prosperous life on the outside most of the time. Aristotle said, that the ultimate aim or purpose of human life is to achieve your own happiness. You are the very happiest when what you are doing on the outside is congruent with your values on the inside. When you are living in complete alignment with what you consider to be good and right and true, you will automatically feel happy and positive about yourself and your world. Your goals must be congruent with your values and your values must be congruent with your goals this is why clarifying your values is often the starting point to high achievement in peak performance. Values. Clarification requires that you think through what is really important to you in life. You then organize your entire life around these values. Any attempt to live on the outside in a manner that contradicts the values you hold on the inside will cause you stress, negativity, unhappiness, pessimism, and even anger and frustration. Your chief responsibility to yourself in the creation of a great life is therefore for you to develop absolute clarity about your values in everything you do. Stephen Covey once said, Be sure that as you scramble up the ladder of success, it is leaning against the right building. Carly Simon once sang a famous line, Is this all there is? Many people work hard on the outside to achieve goals that they think they want only to find at the end of the day that they get no joy or satisfaction from their accomplishments. This occurs when the outer accomplishment is not in harmony with your inner values. Don't let this happen to you. Socrates said, the unexamined life is not worth living. This applies to your values as much as to any other area of your life. 
Now use clarification is something you do on a go forward basis. You continually stop the clock like a timeout in a football game and ask, what are my values in this area? In the Bible it says, what does it benefit a man if he achieves the whole world but loses his own soul? The happiest people in the world today are those who are living in harmony with their innermost convictions and values. The unhappiest people are those who are attempting to live incongruent with what they truly value and believe. Self-trust is the foundation of greatness. Self-trust comes from listening to your intuition to your still small voice within. Men and women begin to become great when they begin to listen to their inner voices and absolutely trust that they're being guided by a higher power each step of the way. Living in alignment with your true values is the royal road to self-confidence, self-respect, and personal pride. In fact, almost every human problem can be resolved by returning to values. Whenever you experience stress of any kind, look into yourself and ask, in what way am I compromising my innermost values in this situation? How can you tell what your values really are? The answer is simple. You always demonstrate your true values in your actions, and especially your actions under pressure. Whenever you are forced to choose between one behavior and another, you will always act consistent with what is most important and valuable to you at that moment. Values, in fact, are organized in a hierarchy. You have a series of values, some of them very intense and important, and some of them weaker and less important. One of the most important exercises you can engage in to determine who you really are and what you really want is to organize your values by priority. Once you're clear about the relative importance of your values, you can then organize your outer life so that it is in alignment with them. There are some insightful ways to help you determine your true values. First of all, you can look at your past. How have you behaved under pressure in the past? What choices did you make with your time or money when you were forced to choose? Your answers will give you an indication of your predominant values at that time. Dale Carnegie once wrote, tell me what gives a person his greatest feeling of importance and I will tell you his entire philosophy of life. What makes you feel important? What raises your self-esteem? What increases your sense of self-respect and personal pride? What have you accomplished in your past life that has given you the greatest sense of pride and satisfaction? These answers will give you good indications of your true values. The spiritual teacher Emmett Fox wrote about the importance of discovering your heart's desire. What is your heart's desire? What is it that deep down in your heart, more than anything else you would like to be have or do in life? As a friend of mine asks, what do you want to be famous for? What words would you like people to use to describe you when you are not there? What would you like people to say about you when you have passed on? What would you like someone to say about you at your funeral? How do you want your family, friends and children to remember you? How would you want them to talk about you after you had left this earth? How would you like people to talk about you? What kind of a reputation do you have today? What kind of a reputation would you like to have sometime in the future? What would you have to begin doing today in order to create the kind of reputation that you desire? Many people have had difficult experiences growing up. They have fallen onto hard times and become associated with the wrong people. They have behaved in ways that were illegal or socially unacceptable. Sometimes. They have even been convicted and sent to prison for their crimes. But at a certain point in life, they decided to change. They thought seriously about the kind of person that they wanted to be known as and thought of in the future. They decided to change their lives by changing the values that they lived by. By making these decisions and sticking to them, they changed their lives. And what others have done, you can do as well. Remember, it doesn't matter where you're coming from. All that really matters is where you're going. If you were an outstanding person in every respect, how would you behave toward others? What sort of impression would you leave on others after you had met them and spoken with them? Imagine you could be a completely excellent person. How would you be different from today? In psychology, your level of self-esteem determines your level of happiness. Self-esteem is defined as how much you like yourself. Your self-esteem, in turn, is determined by your self-image. This is the way you see yourself and think about yourself in your day-to-day -day interactions with others. Your self-image is shaped by your self-ideal. Your self-ideal is made up of the virtues 
values, goals, hopes, dreams, and aspirations that you have for yourself sometime in the future. Here is what psychologists have discovered. The more your behavior in the moment is consistent with what you feel your ideal behavior should be, the more you like and respect yourself, and the happier you are. On the other hand, whenever you behave in a way that is inconsistent with your ideal of your very best behavior, you experience a negative self-image. You feel yourself to be performing below your best, below what you truly aspire to. As a result, your self-esteem and your level of happiness decrease. The moment that you begin walking, talking, and behaving in ways that are consistent with your highest ideals, your self-image improves, your self-esteem increases, and you feel happier about yourself and your world. For example, whenever you are complimented or praised by another person or given a prize or an award for accomplishment, your self-esteem goes up sometimes dramatically. You feel happy about yourself. You feel that your whole life is in harmony and that you are living congruent with your highest ideals. You feel successful and valuable. Your aim should be to deliberately and systematically create the circumstances that raise yourself, team in everything you do. You should live your life as if you were already the outstanding person that you intend to be sometime in the future. What are your values today with regard to your work and your career? Do you believe in the values of integrity, hard work, dependability, creativity, cooperation, initiative, ambition, and getting along well with people? People who live these values in their work are vastly more successful and more highly esteemed than people who do not. What are your values with regard to your family? Do you believe in the importance of unconditional love, continuous encouragement and reinforcement, patience, forgiveness, generosity, warmth, and attentiveness? People who practice these values consistently with the important people in their lives are much happier than people who do not. What are your values with regard to money and financial success? Do you believe in the importance of honesty, industry, thrift, frugality, education, excellent performance, quality, and persistence? People who practice these values are far more successful in their financial lives than those who do not and far faster as well. What about your health? Do you believe in the importance of self-discipline, self-mastery, and self-control with regard to diet, exercise, and rest? Do you set high standards for your levels of health and fitness and then work every day to live up to those standards? People who practice these values live longer, healthier lives than people who do not. Remember, you become what you think about most of the time. Successful, happy people think about their values and how they can live and practice those values in every part of their lives, every single day. The big payoff is that the more you live your life consistent with your values, the happier, healthier, more positive, and energetic you will be. Perhaps the most important value of all is that of integrity. A billionaire once said to me, integrity is not so much a value in itself, it is rather the value that guarantees all the other values. Wow, this was a great insight for me. Once you have decided that you are going to live consistent with a value, your level of integrity determines whether or not you follow through on your commitment. The more you discipline yourself to live consistent with the very best you know, the greater is your level of personal integrity and the higher your level of integrity, the happier and more powerful you will feel in everything you do. Truly great men and women are always described as having high levels of integrity. They live their lives consistent with their highest values, even when no one is looking. Mediocre men and women, on the other hand, are always cutting corners and compromising their integrity, especially when no one is watching. Decide today to be a man or woman of honor. Resolve to tell the truth and to live in truth with yourself and others. Crystallize your values in each area of your life. Write them down. Think of how you would behave if you were living consistent with those values, and then refuse to compromise them for any reason. Once you accept complete responsibility for your life and for everything that happens to you, and then create an ideal picture of your perfect future and clarify your values, you are now ready to begin setting clear, specific goals in every area of your life. You are now on the launching ramp and ready to take off toward the stars.
All successful people are excellent communicators. So how do you communicate more effectively with others? Now, the first one is a profound communication principle, and the first agreement, say what you mean and mean what you say. Words have the power to create or destroy, and a careless comment can alter a relationship forever. So it's a good idea to choose your words carefully and consider their impact before you put them out there in the world. Before you speak or write, I want you to ask yourself these four questions. Is it necessary? Is it true? Is it kind? Is it helpful? And if you don't get yeses to those questions, then don't say it. One of the things I observe is simply this. A lot of people are very careless with their language. I mean, the words you use either lift up your energy, the words you use either make you more creative, or the words you use deny your talents. Think about the great dictators. Their words of hatred, their words of toxicity, their words of breakdown cause the people around them to do sometimes incredibly terrifying acts. And then you look at people like Nelson Mandela, Martin Luther King Jr., Mother Teresa, the great business builders, the humanitarians, the great artists, they were so careful with their words, and their words lifted people up. That's really what great leaders do, they use the language of leadership. I see this everywhere. Someone very close to me, who was a little sloppy with her languaging, said, Oh, I forgot to do this, it's not on my to-do list. I should punch myself in the face. If you say that every day, what's that doing to your self-esteem? If you say that over a lifetime, what's that doing to your self-identity? As you know, your income is a function of your self-identity, and your performance is a reflection of your personal story. The way you build your self-architecture and the way you see yourself in the world is in part through your words. You're never going to rise any higher in terms of your impact in the world than the way you see yourself. If you see yourself as average, well, you're not going to read the books, go to the events, do the study, put in the training time. Find the mentors, do the work to rise to world class because you're running an interior psychological story that says you're average, and the A players are somehow different from you. If deep down inside, you're coming from scarcity, and you think, I'll never have more than the salary that I'm making. It's because of the story that you have through the words you've used. Well then, you're not going to go out there and ask for the big order. You're not going to start the big business. You're not going to read the books on financial mastery. Because deep inside, you would say, what would be the point? I'm not one of those people. If you want to rewire yourself, your identity, so you go in the world, and you're literally operating at legendary, then you absolutely must dial into this first point of what legendary leaders do in terms of the way they speak, which is to get your precision of languaging right. Like I say, the great leaders, how did they transform humanity? It was through their words. How did the great military generals get their armies to go out there on fire? It was through their words. So calibrate your languaging, sir, your words to yourself are world class, and also the words you use to your team, to your customers, to your loved ones. So incredibly important. This leads me to the next communication skill that's probably the most critical skill for everyone on the planet to master, and that is the skill of effective listening. Now, the undeniable truth is that so many of us are terrible listeners, and there can never be effective communication without both parties being as focused on the listening part as they are in the speaking part. Because if you aren't really listening and responding to what the other person is actually saying, ultimately, all you're really doing is having a conversation with yourself. Now, here's an invaluable tip. Whenever you're having an important conversation, it could be with your spouse or your partner, with a child, with an employer, a customer, or someone on the other side of the political divide, let them go first. Don't interrupt them and argue with them. Let them empty themselves out first. Remember this, you can't pour water into a full glass. You have to let the water out before you can have more put in. Instead, really listen to their point of view. Be curious. How is it that they've come to feel this way, to have this point of view? What is it that they are needing you to hear? Now, this takes a commitment to really want to know what the other person is experiencing and needing. Sometimes when you've done your best to listen closely to someone, you may not have heard exactly what it was they were trying to say. That's why it's so important for you to double check and make sure you really understood them correctly. The easiest way to do that is before you speak, to say, so what I'm hearing you say is, and then repeat back to them what you think they were saying and what they meant to say and then give them the opportunity to clarify any misunderstandings that you might have before you respond to them. So it's always best to make sure you're really responding to what they're really saying. The more you practice again, the quality of your performance is all about the quality of your practice. And the more you actually practice speaking up when you know you want to speak up, the more you will actually step up when you actually speak up with someone. And you tell them how you're feeling and you tell them what's most important to you. Well, if it's the right relationship, one that's meant to be in your life, whether it's professional or personal, that is really a gateway into the other person. 
if you're going to make your point and they're going to make their point, you better have your points organized because otherwise you're going to look like and be an absolute idiot. You are not going to get anywhere. Teach people to be articulate because that's the most dangerous thing you can possibly be. If you're going to speak effectively, you have to know way more than you're talking about. To do that, you have to do a lot of reading. That's on the input side. And then on the output side, well, there's some tricks. There isn't a thousand people there. There's a thousand individuals. So you just look at an individual, and you say something, and you can tell if they're engaged, they look confused, or they look interested, or they look angry, or they look bored, and they give you feedback about how you're doing. The people that I've watched in my life who have been spectacularly successful, why they have skills clearly, that's a minimum precondition. But they're also very, very good at articulating themselves. So whenever they negotiate, they're successful. They are quiet, self-contained, not particularly expressive, they're sensitive, people-oriented, and concerned about other people's opinions. If you're communicating with this person, it requires slow, low-key, easygoing, friendly, almost warm and fuzzy. Now, the third type of person is what we call the director. They want to achieve with and through other people. They like to talk about achievement. What are you doing? How did you do it? How did it work? Let me tell you what I did and how it worked for me. Many times they become managers or executives because they have highly integrated personalities. They're very concerned about results, but they're also concerned about people. Now, everybody you meet is in one of these four quadrants or groups. The mistake that most people make is that they treat everyone else as if they were just the same as they were. However, no matter which style of communicator you are, three quarters of the people you meet are something else. Now there's no right or wrong, better or worse style. These are almost born into people. You can see them in children from an early age. However, your job in asking questions and listening to people is to find out which style they are, and then to practice personality flexibility so that you can get along with a greater number of different types of people. Somebody's having a bad day, and you don't know they're having a bad day, but somebody's really feeling bad, and you offer up a kind word. Maybe it's just a friendly hello, how are you? Maybe it's just taking a minute or two to listen to what somebody has to say. But your few words of kindness or your few minutes of attention could turn somebody's day around, might make them feel more worthwhile, cared for. Be generous with your kindness, it'll go a long way. When you give kindness, it's not gone, it's invested. It'll come back to you too, five, ten, one hundred times. Kindness is so important in every aspect of your life. It's so important in building good relationships with others. Most people won't reveal the problem on the first question. You say, Mary, how are you today? How are things? And she says, well, everything's okay. And you can tell by the way she said it that everything's not okay. And most of us don't want to come right out and say what the real problem is unless two criteria are met. Number one, we're talking to someone we can trust. And number two, we're talking to someone who really cares. So sometimes it takes that second question, maybe a third and maybe a fourth before trust fills, and the person finally understands that you do care. Then they're willing to tell you what's really going on, what's really on their mind. Learn to ask questions that will build the trust and communication between you and those you work with. Learn to express, not impress. If you want to touch somebody, express sincerity from the heart. Impress builds a gulf, express builds a bridge. When you want to enhance the rapport you have with someone, you need effective communication skills. You'll need the skills that will help you work better with others to achieve their goals and achieve your goals. You need effective communication skills. Let me give you a few tips on good communication because to be able to get along well with others, to be able to work well with others, to be able to live well with others, you must be a good communicator. 1. Have something worth saying, interest, fascination, sensitivity, and knowledge. 2. Now that you've got something worth saying, number 2 is say it well, and you've got to be able to translate it so it'll benefit someone. You must have a good delivery system for your substance and knowledge, awareness, understanding, and experience. Learn to say it well. Here are some clues on saying it well. 1. Sincerity. The best communication occurs when both people are sincere. One sincerely wishing to learn or listen, and the other sincerely wishing to share. 2. Repetition. Part of saying it well is simply practicing to say it well. Practice, practice, practice. Part of what I teach in sales training is practice. Practice. You start with something simple, and when you don't know much about what you're doing, practice is even more important. So, practice your presentation and your ability to communicate what you know. The people out there who say, no, I wouldn't care for any, are just as valuable. Why? Because they took the time to let you practice your presentation. Especially when you're just getting started, you might want to pay them to listen to you practice while you stumble around. 
Be thankful for the no's. Practice helps you develop skills. Skills make labor more valuable. If you just sell, you can make a living. If you skillfully sell, you can make a fortune. If you just talk, you can hold a family together. If you skillfully talk, you can build dreams for the future. The difference is skill. You can cut a tree down with a hammer, but it takes about 30 days. If you trade the hammer for an axe, you can cut the tree down in about 30 minutes. The difference between 30 minutes and 30 days is the tool, and your best communication tool is your skill. So practice to get the skill of saying it well. Part of saying it well is sincerity. Here's another part of saying it well, brevity. Sometimes you don't need too much, just enough. The more you know, here's what I found out, the more you know, the briefer you can be because you can learn to make words more effective. Next is style. Part of saying it well is style. Be a student of style, a variety of styles. Then, make sure you develop your own. Be a student but develop your own. Don't be someone else, let someone else influence you but don't become them. Develop your own style. Here's another tip on saying it well. Vocabulary. You've just got to have a good vocabulary to say it well. Vocabulary, we can only translate for other people with the tools called vocabulary. If you're lacking in vocabulary, then you're lacking in tools to describe some problem or some answer. Words, vocabulary, you can't communicate without that. And you can't communicate well without a defined vocabulary. Every time you come across a word that's new to you, what should you do? Look it up. Every time you're in a conversation and the other person uses a word that's new to you, look it up. Now, most of the time you can figure out the meaning of a new word by how it's used, but if you can't, make sure you hold your response until you know for sure. Vocabulary is a way of seeing, it gives us insight, and only with your present vocabulary can you see. You can't use tools you don't have to see, to create light, understanding, awareness, comprehension, perception, vision. You can only have as much vision as your present vocabulary will give you, and if you're limited in vocabulary, then you can't see very well. What if a person could only see the world through a little tiny hole? Now, vocabulary is also what we use as a tool to express what's going on in our heart, what's going on in our head, to translate our questions, translate our answers, our perceptions, what we see, to be able to say it. And I'm telling you, if you have a limited way of translating and expressing what's going on in your heart and what's going on in your head, you'll fall way behind. So, you'd have twin problems without a good vocabulary. Number one, you wouldn't be able to see. Number two, you wouldn't be able to express. And your world would keep getting smaller and smaller. Not having the vision, not having the tools. Finally, you wouldn't need a place much bigger than 10 by 12 to live. Why? That's about as big as some people's world is. That's all they've got. This little narrow world, making mistakes every day. Why? They can't see, getting it wrong every day. They can't comprehend, they can't understand. No tools with which to translate for good communication. Number one is having something good to say. Number two is saying it well. And number three is reading your audience. You've got to read what's going on between you and the people you're talking to. Should you say what you're saying a little softer? Should you say it a little stronger? Should you explain it more? Should you be more clear and concise? Should you quit? A lot of the decision making that's going on during a conversation with someone depends on how well you can read, how well you can tell what's going on in the minds of those you're trying to reach. Doesn't matter if you're looking into the face of a child or the face of a colleague or a thousand faces in an audience, you've got to read what's going on, you've got to pay attention. So let me give you some ways to read. The first one is you've got to read what you see. You've got to read what you see. Search the face of a child and see if you're coming across. See if they look perplexed. See if they're getting it. See if they can't get it. Body language tells us a lot. Look at how the people you're talking to are sitting. What they are doing with their hands, their eyes. A guy's got his arms crossed, legs crossed, chin tucked down, and frowning. You've got your work cut out for you. This guy is not going to be easy to reach. The lady standing up from behind her desk. You've got to hurry. She's not going to listen to much more. You've probably got to pick up the pace and get down to it. But the first one is read what you see. Here's the second one. Read what you hear. You've got to be a good listener to be a good communicator. Get some feedback. Listen. To be a good parent, you've got to be a good listener. To talk well, you've got to listen well. That's so valuable. Get the feedback. Now, what you hear may help you change gears. Be a little stronger. Be a little softer. Find a different illustration. This one isn't working. Search for another way to say it. Become sensitive to someone else's words, not just by preparing to talk when the other person's through. Listen. Pick up those signals, the feedback of words gives us. Here's the third way to read your audience, and that is to read how you feel. 
emotional signals. You've got to learn to pick those up. Pick up those feelings. Women just seem to have this part built in. Men can learn it, but women have it. A woman says, it doesn't feel right. Just doesn't feel right. A man says, what does that mean? It doesn't feel right. She says, it's something. He says, something? What is this something? She says, I'm telling you, something doesn't feel right. Now, men can learn it, but women have it. Learn to read your emotions. Learn to read what others are feeling so you can adjust your communication, so you can adjust your approach, so you can get your message across, so you can communicate well. Exactly where are you today and how are you doing in each of the important areas of your life, especially as they relate to your goals? If you want to be the best you can be and to achieve what is truly possible for you, you must be brutally honest with yourself about your point of departure. You must sit down and analyze yourself in detail to determine exactly where you are today in each area. If you want to earn more money, the first thing you do is to sit down and determine exactly how much you are earning right now. How much did you earn last year and the year before? How much will you earn this year? How much are you earning each month? The best measure of all is for you to determine how much you are earning each hour right now. Many of my coaching clients calculate their hourly rate each week and compare it against previous weeks. They then set a goal to increase the value of what they do each hour to increase the amount they earn each hour on a goal forward basis, you should do the same. The tighter and more accurate your calculations regarding your income or any other area, the better and faster you can improve in each one of them. If you set a long-term financial goal, the next step is to determine exactly how much you are worth today in financial terms. If your goal is to become a millionaire in the years ahead, you must calculate exactly how much you have accumulated as of today's date. For accurate financial planning, Calculate your net worth today and then draw a line from that point to your long term at point to your long term financial goal. Divide the line by the number of years you intend to spend to achieve that financial goal. In this way, you will know exactly how much you have to save, invest and accumulate each year to become financially independent. What's the reality when you begin to plan your long term future? One of the most valuable exercises you can engage in is called zero-based thinking. In zero-based thinking, you ask this question. Knowing what I now know, is there anything that I am doing today that I wouldn't start up again today if I had to do it over? Knowing what I now know, no matter who you are or what you are doing, there are certain things in your life that knowing what you now know, you wouldn't get into again today if you had to do them over. It's difficult, if not impossible, for you to make progress in your life if you allow yourself to be held back by decisions you have made in the past. If there is something in your life that you wouldn't get into again today, your next question should be, how do I get out and how fast? I have a good friend who is a golfer. In high school and university as a bachelor, he played golf several times a week. He organized his entire life around golf even flying south in the winter to golf courses that had no snow on them. Over time, he started and built a business, got married and had children, but he was still locked into the idea of playing golf several times a week. Eventually, the enormous time commitment of playing golf began to affect his business, his married life, and his relationship with his children. When the stress became too great, he sat down and zero, based his activities. He realized that, knowing what he now knew in his current situation, Golf would have to be cut back dramatically if he was going to achieve other things in his life that were now more important. By reducing his golf time, he got his whole life back in balance in just a few weeks. If you want to earn a certain amount of money, ask yourself, 
Why am I not earning this amount of money already? What's holding you back? What's the major reason that you're not already earning what you want to earn, what you want to earn? Again, you must be perfectly honest with yourself. Look around you and identify other people who are earning the kind of money that you want to earn. What are they doing differently from you? What special skills and abilities have they developed that you have not yet developed? What skills and abilities do you need to acquire if you want to earn the same kind of money they are earning? First, identify the key result areas of your work. What are they? These are critical tasks you must be absolutely excellent at in order to do the whole job for which you are paid. You must be good at every one of these tasks if you want to earn the kind of money that you're truly capable of earning. Here's an important discovery. Your weakest key skill sets the height at which you can use all your other skills. Your weakest key result area, whatever it is, determines your income in your field. You can be absolutely excellent at everything except for one key skill and that skill will hold you back every step of the way. So, look at yourself in the mirror and ask, what are my weakest skill areas? Where are you below average or poor? What is it that you do poorly that interferes with your ability to use your other skills? What is it that you do poorly that other people do better than you? Especially what key skills do you lack that are essential for your success? Whatever they are, you need to identify them accurately and honestly and then make a plan to improve in those areas. When you embark on the achievement of any great goal, you should imagine that at any time you could start your career over and over again. Many people today are walking away from their educations, their businesses, their industries and their years of experience and getting into something completely new and different. They are honest enough to recognize that there is a limited future in the direction they are going and they're determined to get into something where the future possibilities are far greater. Take a hard look at your current company and industry. Take a hard look at your current job situation. Take a hard look at your market relative to your competitors. In reinventing yourself, stand back and think about starting your career over again today, knowing what you know and what you know. Imagine that your job and your industry disappeared overnight. Imagine that you had to make brand new career choices. Your most valuable financial asset is your earning ability. In reality, you could lose your home, your car, your bank account and your furniture and be left with nothing but the clothes on your back. But as long as your earning ability was intact, you could walk across the street and begin generating a good living almost immediately. See yourself as a bundle of resources capable of doing many different things. You already have a wide variety of skills, abilities, knowledge, talents, education, and experience. There are many jobs and tasks that you could do or learn to do extremely well. Never allow yourself to get locked into a particular course of action in mentally starting over as though you were beginning your career anew. Look deeply into yourself as well. What good habits do you have that are helping you and moving you toward your goal? What bad habits have you developed that may be holding you back? What are your very best qualities of character and personality? What are your weakest qualities? What new habits and qualities do you need to develop to get the very most out of yourself? And what is your plan to begin developing them? What bad habits do you need to get rid of and replace with good habits? Whenever I do strategic planning for a company, we start off the session with four questions. First we ask, where are we now? We gather data and information from every part of the company to develop a crystal clear picture of our starting point, especially with regard to sales market position and profitability. Second, we ask, where would we ideally like to be in the future? We idealize and practice future orientation. We imagine that we can make the company and do anything we like in the years ahead and we create a perfect vision of what the company would look like if we were successful in every respect. Third, we ask, how did we get to where we are today? What did we do right? What would we do differently if we had to do it over again? What have been our biggest successes so far and why did they occur? What have we failed at and what were the reasons for it? Uh, the fourth question we ask and answer is always, what do we do now to get from where we are to where we want to go? Based on our experience, what should we be doing more of or less of? What should we start doing that we are not doing today? What should we stop doing altogether? Taking the time to honestly evaluate each part of your situation before you launch towards your goal will save you months and even years on your journey. It will dramatically improve the speed at which you achieve your goals once you get going. Now, 
Here are three things you can do immediately to put these ideas into action. First, determine the reality of your current situation relative to your major goals. Where are you now and how far you have to go? Second, apply the zero-based thinking principle to every area of your life. What are you doing today that you wouldn't get into again if you wouldn't get into again if you had to do it over, knowing what you now know? And third, do a complete financial analysis of your life today. How much are you earning right now and how much are you worth? What are your goals in the financial... Welcome to a transforming journey that will unleash your financial potential and fulfill your abundance aspirations. Today, we delve into millionaires' mindsets and what it takes to be wealthy and successful. This path centers on a simple but fundamental truth. Becoming a millionaire requires a mentality shift from scarcity to plenty, from constraint to limitless possibilities. Taking responsibility for your financial future choices and daily actions is the first step. Becoming a millionaire is more than just getting rich. An attitude of discipline, commitment, and steadfast belief in wealth creation is needed. Recognizing that success is earned via focused effort, not luck, is key. As we explore the principles and techniques that have made millions of people millionaires, remember that you can change your financial situation. By taking responsibility for your thoughts, behaviors, and financial future, you start a sequence of events that can bring you endless wealth. Ready to adopt a millionaire mindset? Are you ready to take charge of your finances and plan for success? Please join me on this remarkable trip that promises a life beyond your wildest dreams. I think you'll agree with me that everyone wants to know how to get rich and become a millionaire. Some people just don't know where to begin, which is a shame. You might be shocked to learn that you can start today to get rich in your own way. Right away, I want to praise you on your choice to teach yourself. As a word of warning, I'd like you to pay close attention to this movie because I have a gift for you in the middle of it. There are over 80% of self-made millionaires in the U.S. who started out with nothing or very little. That sounds a lot like me. When I was young and in my early 30s, I never had extra money to start a fortune. It looked like there were always enough bills, if not too many, to spend all the money I made. I had debts all the time. You should be ready for your chance because you wouldn't have been able to do anything with a great business chance if it came up. You wouldn't have been in the right frame of mind. I learned that most of the people around me were in the same situation when I started to learn about making money and self-made millionaire. Uh, there wasn't much chance that the dream of getting really rich would come true. You could end up with more bills than money or assets, just like they did. There's no need to say more than that. The stats are pretty scary. Statistics from the insurance industry show that only 1 in 100 people who hit retirement age will be wealthy. 4 out of every 100 will be able to support themselves financially. After a lifetime of well-paying work in the richest society in human history, only 15 will have saved some money. The other 80 will depend on benefits, be working, or be broke. But why does this take place? Why do poor people retire? People don't have a good retirement for two main reasons. First, they never decide to be rich when they quit. They wish, hope, and pray that they will do it, but they never say for sure that they will. Second, they put things off until it's too late, even if they want to retire rich. They always have a good reason to put it off. But if they don't want to live that way and become rich, it starts with a wish and a decision. There are four important steps you must take, all beginning with the letter D. If you really want to beat the odds, become financially independent and retire rich. The first is want. You have to want it badly enough to commit irrevocably and be prepared to give up things. Making a decision is the second date. You have to decide right now to do everything it takes. Be prepared to pay any cost, travel any distance in order to reach your objective. For financial success, you also need to develop discipline and resolve. Determination, the third D, is sticking with it till you succeed in spite of all of the challenges and setbacks you may run across. The fourth D is discipline. The discipline to know yourself and to form the routines required to become financially independent. These are the four D's, desire, decision, determination, and discipline. And you may gauge your future success by ranking your performance in each on a 1 to 10 scale. Yet, where to begin? Three immediate actions you can take to implement these concepts are as follows. First and foremost, decide today that 
In spite of any short-term challenges, you will become financially independent. Subsequently, put it in writing, devise a strategy, and begin daily work on it. Second, make a predetermined decision that you will not give up, you will not give up, and you will keep going until you reach your objective. Third, I have a totally free present for you that is a training on how to draw in money, prosperity, and plenty. In only 21 days, financialize your life without compromising your morals, health, or overworking. And in this way, you might develop a millionaire mentality. The link is going to stay in the description. That being stated, I'll offer some advice to assist you. See the way ahead and create objectives to make more money than you could have ever imagined. The specifics of these six exercises can help you find financial freedom and become a millionaire, as well as clarity in your life. Firstly, how to make extra money. Draft your ideas first. Go get a spiral notepad. Write down all the ideas that occur to you during the day, and if at all feasible, carry it around. Periodically go over this idea log. Sometimes the thought that strikes you in a discussion while driving, sitting, reading, or watching TV could be the one that launches your career. If increasing your income is your aim, list every plan you have for achieving it. Write down the concept and capture it is the rule. You'll usually forget it if you don't jot it down right away. Second, set goals. Sit back and consider your financial objectives. Regularly take time to unwind and consider your objectives and the challenges standing in your way. You frequently get ideas during these downtimes that can save you hours, days, and perhaps years of laborious work. The third is using the magic wand approach to achieve financial freedom. Daydreaming is a regular exercise to practice. This is also referred to as the magic wand technique at times. Imagine you could wave your magic wand over your present predicament or issue. As you wave your magic wand, picture that everything that stands in your way of your financial objectives is gone. Fourth, consider your financial objectives and project forward. Suppose you want to launch a profitable company in a certain industry. Imagine that three or five years from now, you have a prosperous company in that sector. It would look like what? It would be enormous, right? You would work with what kind of people, uh, what sort of market reputation would you enjoy? At what sales and profitability level would you be? How would you manage this company? And moreover, what might you do now to turn this future ambition into a reality? Fifth tip, mental assault is the key to becoming rich. The 20 ideas method or mental assault is maybe the most effective way to stimulate creative thought in any subject. Using this concept more than any other creative thinking technique ever found, more people, including me, have become rich. Using this method alone, in fact, might help you become financially independent. The technique is easy. Start a piece of paper with any problem or objective, written as a question at the top. To double your income in the next 12 months, for instance, you would write, how can I double my income over the next 12 months? You then discipline yourself to write a minimum of 20 responses to that question. If you would want, you can write more than 20 responses. But you have to exercise self-control and resolve to write at least that many. Sixth tip, put money away and become a millionaire. Saving $100 every month from the time you started working at the age of 20 until you retired at 65 and investing that money in a mutual fund that yielded an average of 10% return would be one of the simplest approaches. At retirement, it would be valued about $1,800,000. Most likely, your character and mentality would be so shaped by your discipline and will to save at any age, year after year, that you would wind up making far more than the 10% yearly. Nonetheless, everyone may become a millionaire on their own. For dollar one hundred a month, take action. Focus questions make you think and come up with new ideas. After you set a goal, ask yourself, why am I not already here? What's the main reason? To start your journey to wealth, do these routines right now. There's a gift I left for you in the video description that you should take. If you really want to change your financial situation and get rich, we'll keep the link in the text. You can learn how to bring money, wealth and abundance into your life in just 21 days without giving up family, health, morals, or working too much. And this is how you can think like a millionaire. Now, remember that you will only be able to get the lessons for a short time. So, if you really want to get ahead financially, you need to make a choice right now. Share this video with your friends, family, and other people you care about. Simply tell us in the box below how much you liked the movie and which lesson you found most interesting. We'll see you in the next one.
Finally, remember this. Becoming a millionaire is not a goal, it's a path. A journey of learning about yourself, growing, and becoming more powerful. It's not just about getting rich. It's also about developing a mindset of plenty of strength and unwavering drive. As this part comes to a close, I want you to take charge of your financial future. You are responsible for what you think, what you do, and what you believe about money. Know that you have the power to make your dreams come true and change your fate. Adopt the habits, way of thinking, and success concepts we talked about today. It's important to always be striving for perfection and to stay committed to reaching your goals. Remember that only a few people can become millionaires. Anyone who is ready to put in the work, invest in themselves, and believe in their own limitless potential can become a millionaire. So my friends, go out with faith. Be in charge of your own money matters and don't be afraid to dream big. When it comes to getting rich, the only thing that stops you are the limits you set for yourself. Thanks for coming with me on this journey of change. Happy birthday. May you be successful, wealthy, and...